Okay, welcome everyone to the Indoor Science Cafe um, February. And then I'm Chair Kubora, Ohio State. And then um, just quickly going through the upcoming cafe series, uh, February 23rd today, we have Carla Garcia from Mexico. Um, and then also she has a um, technical staff um, position at Hot Americas. Um, she's a founder of this company, Microgreen FLN, and she's gonna talk about uh, the status uh, in Mexico. Um, next cafe is scheduled on March 30th, um, um, uh, Tuesday, usual time, 11 a.m. Eastern. And then we will have a USDA uh, people as speakers who will be introducing this SBIR program. Um, if you are familiar with, you probably know what it is, but this is a small business innovation research grants. So basically grants for um, business people to develop technologies. Usually um, this program encourage collaboration with uh, 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 academic people, but um, you, can, you can find all the information in this great opportunity, um, Dr. Stephen Thompson and then Merinda Kaufman are going to um, explain to us what it is. Um, April um, Cafe, um, we are communicating with the Japan Plant Factory Association to um, uh, have them talk a little bit about Japanese status. Um, so this year, beginning of the uh, year, I, I'm kind of a little bit more international, you know, um, in terms of um, uh, topics. And then May, um, I'm in communication with a company who, who, who has a unique application of indoor farming. So um, stay tuned and then we will announce um, as we confirm the presentation. So let's introduce again, um, Carla Garcia, who got master degrees from plant sciences, uh, School of Plant Science at the uh, University of Arizona. And she is uh, now a business person. And then at, also at the same time, she does a lot of technical education for Mexican growers. Um, so she is the front line um, in the Mexico CEA um, industry. So it's not necessarily supporting large greenhouses, but more like uh, growers who wanted to start or who wanted to learn uh, controlled environment agriculture. So with that quick introduction, I'm gonna stop my screen sharing. And then Carla, if you can start your presentation and then you are, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you for the introduction, Dr. Kubota. Um, so today I will share a little bit about the current status and opportunities that we have in indoor farming in Mexico. Um, first of all, this wasn't an easy task because there is no record about indoor farming in Mexico. Uh, for greenhouses, we have like the, the area and there is the statistics that you can check every year. But for indoor farming, there is no statistics. So I have to sneak my nose in different projects uh, to let you know what is going on in this area. So first of all, um, there is no comparison between Latin America and United States in terms of the development of vertical farming projects. Uh, in Mexico, we have few projects uh, that are big. So I will focus on, on uh, three uh, big projects that we have, which is Karma Verde, Verde Compacto and a project uh, made by, by ITSCO. Uh, these are the uh, like the most biggest projects that we have in indoor farming in Mexico. It's not everything we have, we have more projects, but these are uh, the ones that are, are bigger. So why indoor farming is important for Mexico? Um, same same uh, situation for many places, I guess. Uh, in Mexico, uh, we have uh, inefficiencies uh, during uh, the production and also the storage and most important, the transportation of the products that we made. Uh, so we have a lot of, of, of product losses. And um, so with vertical farming, with indoor farming, uh, we, can, we can provide a local product and uh, reduce the transportation time. Uh, also, uh, a very important problem that we have in Mexico is that we use a lot of water for agriculture 
and uh, we don't use well this resource. So uh, we, we waste a lot of water in, in bad irrigation techniques. Um, and uh, the problem is that uh, 2019 was the driest year in Mexico. So right now, um, some uh, cities that are uh, like capital for agriculture in Mexico, they are having problems with, with dry weather. Um, uh, one example is Sonora or also Chihuahua, which are uh, two states with a lot of production and they are experiencing uh, a lot of problems with, with drought. And last but not less important, we have a lot of people that doesn't have uh, uh, food to eat. So uh, with indoor farming, um, one thing that we want to push is to um, give the opportunity to people uh, to produce uh, more food in less space uh, in, in, in using better uh, water and uh, light and all the resources. So uh, in Mexico, we have a situation uh, about uh, the demand of products that we export uh, to the United States most of the time. And um, this, uh, this produce demands a lot of quality. So there is also a demand for produce produced in Mexico uh, to be exported to other countries with, uh, with high quality. And uh, a clear example is uh, now all the greenhouses that we have for, for hydroponic production. And also this is an opportunity for, for indoor farming. So to have systems where we can produce high quality products that we can also export. And also we have uh, customers that are more interested in uh, to buy local products. So this is also an opportunity for vertical farming. And um, by 2050, uh, the population will increase to 150 million people in Mexico. So we need to find a way uh, to uh, produce more in less space and with a better use of the resources. So in general information, what is the current status of Mexico in indoor farming? So first of all, there is exponential interest in this topic. Uh, we can see this in uh, the students that are now um, uh, in, uh, in agriculture programs. And um, indoor farming is relatively new in Mexico. Um, uh, about seven years ago, the, the first project started. So it's relatively new. And uh, we have a lot of small growers. We have a lot of, of people that is uh, growing microgreens and leafy greens, but in very small spaces. Uh, we have medium scale growers too. And we have a lot of, of home growers, that people that is growing at home uh, for their own consumption. And also we have a lot of people doing trials uh, to start a business. So starting by education, I think that is uh, something really important because uh, when we are trying to grow plants in a different systems, we need to know how to do it. So uh, in Hort Americas, we provide uh, short courses uh, to um, deliver information about how to grow plants in indoor farming. Uh, we are putting a lot of effort on this uh, because uh, one issue that we have in Mexico is that in uh, uh, the universities, if you check the programs, they don't have any information about, about indoor production or even hydroponics. So uh, for us, it's very important to provide uh, this tool to students uh, if they want to, to, to learn about also this topic. So right now we have teach uh, 243 students uh, in this particular short course that is about indoor farming. We made this short course uh, one year ago. Um, so this, uh, in these short course, we teach them about light quality, light intensity, uh, the gas exchange, everything that you need to to take care about in an indoor facility. So from these students, about 25% there are right now uh, growing uh, at home to start a business or some of them, they already start a business. Uh, all of them growing uh, uh, in very small spaces uh, for microgreens production or leafy greens. Um, continue speaking about education. Um, as I mentioned, one problem that we have is uh, that universities, uh, they, they, don't share, they, they don't share with the students about the topic of indoor farming. And uh, we also uh, work uh, doing that communication with the universities, like uh, speaking with them about the importance of this, of this information and uh, provide all, 
all the things that they need um, to to be able to teach the students uh, these topics. Uh, this is not an effort just for Hort Americas. Uh, I will also speak about other companies that are working in indoor farming in Mexico, and and all of us uh, uh, are are thinking the same the same way. We need to uh, approach uh, fierce uh, education uh, if we want to make a change about about the the current situation of indoor farming. So the University of Nuevo Leon. Uh, this university uh, is, I think, one of the only one that has projects with indoor farming. Uh, the Dr. Uh, Humberto Rodriguez Fuentes, he is uh, the leader of this uh, kind of research. Uh, he is doing hydroponics. He's doing also indoor, indoor farming uh, in vertical farming. And he's also editor of uh, the book Advanced and Trends in Development of Plant Factories. So he is one of the professors that is recognized for the work that, they, uh, that he has done in uh, indoor farming and also teaching students. We have also the Universidad of Sonora, uh, University of Sonora. So uh, in the University of Sonora, they started with uh, hydroponics projects like a couple years ago. Uh, and right now they are also uh, implementing projects with indoor farming. Uh, right now they have one project um, with the objective to compare um, uh, light quality uh, from uh, lamps that have blue, red and white and compare with full white spectrum. Um, so this is with the main goal uh, to develop an economic system to produce microgreens. So they want to know um, if it's more nutritious, uh, then um, they want to, to have, uh, the, to provide uh, the information that we need this kind of lamb to produce high and nutritious uh, uh, produce. And uh, the idea is to provide uh, these systems uh, for uh, people in need. Uh, obviously this will be sponsored by the government. And the project leader for, for this uh, project is the Dr. Uh, Clara Rosalia Alvarez. And the student uh, in charge of this project is Natalia Bernal. Then we have uh, Karma Verde Fresh. Uh, Karma Verde is a company located in uh, Monterrey, Nuevo Leon. So they are, uh, uh, I think, one of the biggest projects that we have in Mexico about indoor farming. They just started at the beginning uh, thinking about business in indoor farming. But uh, after looking how is the situation here in Mexico in indoor farming, uh, they decide now to focus more on, also on education, like provide uh, all the tools uh, to students uh, so they can get experience in indoor farming. The director of the company is Leo Lovato Kelly, uh, and uh, this project is in charge of the students of the University of Nuevo Leon. Uh, this project started also in, in 2015. So Karma Verde uh, Fresh uh, has uh, the first harvest on 2018, and uh, right now they have collaboration with different universities. Uh, they are doing leafy greens, uh, also flowers and strawberries. Uh, they uh, started with products from Hort Americas. Uh, they have an ebb and flow system uh, for vertical farming production. And after that, they start to uh, manufacturing the, their own racks. And also uh, they are now uh, having tests uh, with their own lamps. So one important aspect about Karma Verde is their compromise uh, with, with education. So they have donated um, the, the towers of ebb and flow systems for uh, different universities. So students now can, uh, can learn about these techniques too. And uh, something very important about Karma Verde is that they make a lot of relations. So they have been in touch with institutions in Mexico uh, to get them know about the importance of indoor farming. And uh, this is by providing a business model and also uh, how, uh, how to make the commercialization of this product. This is a very important part uh, in, in Mexico because uh, one of the problems that we have is uh, that right now there is no funding for this kind of projects for at least from the government. 
So Karma Verde is trying to, to make a, a space there for, for inner production. And as I mentioned right now, uh, they are also working with trials uh, with a strawberry in indoor farming. And as I mentioned also, uh, Karma Verde started with the purpose to make business about vertical farming, but after uh, noticing uh, the situation of vertical farming in Mexico, uh, they decide to, um, to focus more on education and also to help the small growers to succeed. So uh, what they do with all the produce that they made, uh, they uh, sell about six to eight kilos uh, that they produce every 15 days. And th they sell these to a small uh, indoor farming growers. Uh, this is to help them to get experience with commercialization and also to help them uh, to make their business successful. And uh, Carmen Verde is very focused on uh, providing tools to different universities. This is also uh, this is actually a slide shared by by Leo Lovato. Um, uh, here he is sharing like all the universities, uh, all the all the collaborations that they have with different uh, different universities. And here you can notice uh, the the impact and also the commitment of Karma Verde to to get this uh, tool and knowledge to, to students, which I think is, will be key in, in the development of, of, of uh, indoor farming. So moving to a different company, uh, one uh, of the biggest projects that we have also in Mexico is Verde Compacto. Uh, Verde Compacto uh, is located in Leon, Guanajuato. Uh, this project started in 2016 and uh, they, uh, they don't do produce, but what they do is uh, they develop a container that is automated uh, for uh, leafy greens production. So they sold already five containers. I will explain how, how these containers are, are made, uh, uh, but important to know that we have five, five uh, persons in Mexico that are working with these facilities. And they have sold the rest of the containers to US, Europe, and Netherlands. And speaking with them, uh, they started this project in Mexico thinking about selling this kind of technology in Mexico. But uh, they found out that not, uh, it's not that easy to find, find people that will invest in this technology. So this is why they are also now uh, getting experience in other, in other countries. And I think that is also something important to mention because uh, that is pointing out a problem that we have that is uh, inversion. So we don't, have, we don't have funding or we don't have people uh, that can uh, do the inversion in these projects. So the directors of these projects are Juan Gabriel Zucar and Jorge Lizardi. Um, they uh, develop this, uh, this container, uh, they sell, uh, uh, a container that uh, is uh, 40, 40 square feet uh, in area, and they can produce uh, 5,000 uh, uh, plants uh, per cycle. So here you can get an idea of how, how is uh, the container. So the objective of this project was uh, to uh, design uh, a system uh, with uh, the highest uh, productivity and efficiency. So they have a space uh, to produce uh, uh, about uh, 5,000 plants in uh, 286 uh, growing towers. Uh, this is all automated. They have LED lighting, of course, and they try to make this uh, an easy operation system. So. Uh, they sell kind of a recipe to uh, the people that, that buy the product so they can easily operate this system. Of course, if you want to make this work, uh, a recipe won't work, right? You need to check everything, but they have kind of um, a recipe to make this more easy to manage. So this system consumes about uh, 200 kilowatts per hour and uh, 50 liters of water daily. And they have called uh, these containers Hofster. So this, this is the project uh, that they have. 
And something important is uh, uh, to mention that uh, this project was started by young people and uh, they got the funding to do this kind of projects. Jesus Ojeda uh, is located in Leon, Guanajuato. He's one of the owners of containers, so he's producing. He, he's uh, selling uh, different kind of lettuce and also microgreens. Um, and so this is an example of someone that is, uh, that is working with this kind of technology. And now I'm moving to uh, the most ambitious project that we have in Mexico in indoor farming. So this is Itzco. Uh, Itzco is a seed company. Um, important to mention that they, they have developed uh, a lot of cultivars. Uh, they are recognized because they, they have developed a lot of lettuce uh, cultivars for hydroponic production. So uh, right now they have a facility, uh, a warehouse they, they, they used to, to use for, for seed storage, but now uh, they are uh, working on a project for vertical farming. The director of this project is uh, Olga Trevin, and this project started in 2018. So this facility is by far uh, the biggest facility that we have for indoor farming in Mexico. Uh, they have a space uh, of uh, 90 uh, uh, square meters for the full production, and they have also germination area and packaging area. So we work uh, with this project, um, uh, specifically Chris from Chris Higgins from Hort Americas. Um, they uh, provide full advice uh, to make the design for, for this system. I have to recognize uh, the commitment of ITSCO uh, to really make this happen. Um, so they have a really old, they just let me share the pictures, like a really old warehouse and they convert it into, uh, into a facility for, for plant production and they follow like all the instructions. So here you can get an idea of how is this system, this was, this was made for, 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 for Hort Americas. Uh, here we have the full production area. So they, they, the idea is to have three different uh, racks Right now, uh, they, they only have one. They still need to, to work in this project. Uh, they have a germination area with ebb and flow system, and they have a packaging area and a storage area. So by far, this is the biggest project that we have uh, in Mexico in indoor farming. And here are just some pictures about, about the lettuces. And um, the biggest, the, the biggest projects that we have in terms of quantity in, in Mexico are uh, microgreens growers. We have a lot of microgreens growers in different, uh, in different places. This is just an example because there is way more th than this. So uh, something that you can notice from here is the area of product uh, production that they have. Uh, they are located in different states of Mexico uh, and uh, it's very important to mention that most of the people doing this kind of project, they are related uh, to Carmen Verde or to Hort Americas. So um, meaning that it, all, the, all, all the projects that we have in indoor farming, they are coming out from uh, the knowledge of, well, when the people reach Hort Americas or, or Karma Verde, uh, then they have the knowledge to apply, uh, uh, to apply for, for these projects. And uh, this is our, these are different companies, Blooming, Microgreens, City Root Farms, Microgreens FLN, which is uh, my company, and Goba. So these are different companies that we have in Mexico. And as I mentioned, we have more, more projects like this one. So by looking this information, uh, we can get an idea of the problems that we have. So definitely we have people that is interested in these topics. Um, but they don't have the resource uh, to make like a big inversion. And we also have people with the potential to make this inversion, like big growers, for example. But uh, most of them, they don't trust uh, uh, this kind of projects because there is not uh, already one project that is big and successful in Mexico. And I think uh, this is uh, something that that is one of the reasons why we don't have a like big projects like in the United States. 
So the challenges uh, that we have is the, that all agriculture generations, uh, they don't believe in indoor farming or, or hydroponics. I have spoke with a lot of professors of universities or growers and, and uh, you, can, you can notice that it's, it's not a religion, right? It's not like belief, but, but they don't trust these kind of systems. Um, and I think this is one of the reasons why uh, professors at the universities, they are not developing research in these topics because they need to ask for funding. So they, they decide then to, to work with other topics. And an easy way to explain this is uh, if we sp speak about greenhouse production. So Mexico has a lot of greenhouse production, but most of the production is uh, medium technology. There are just a few, few projects with high technology inversion. So it's kind of the same issue that we have with greenhouse uh, production and uh, now related to indoor farming. So, um, one of the things, uh, as I think I mentioned uh, many times in this presentation, what we think that is most important right now is to focus on education and uh, to get an idea uh, to the professors and universities of the importance of, this, of these topics. Um, right now, uh, we have just few universities that include in the program um, information about hydroponics or uh, indoor farming. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons uh, everything, all of this is happening is because SAGARPA, uh, this is an institution that provides uh, funding for projects in horticulture. So most of the people, a lot of people that work in greenhouses, they apply for funding uh, to SAGARPA um, to expand the current, uh, the, the current company or to start a company. So what is the issue related with indoor farming? So they don't recognize hydroponic projects. So there's no opportunity. Uh, if you want to get funding with the government, you cannot get it. And uh, at least for greenhouse production, we know that a lot of projects, they start this way. But good news is that uh, now hydroponic production is starting to get recognition in the middle and south of Mexico, speaking about greenhouse production. So it's now getting recognition. I know that Sagarpa is now working on, on at least in Sonora, uh, is working on, on also include, uh, because you can participate for funding, but, but most of the time they reject this kind of projects. So and right now they are at least in Sonora working on also uh, take, uh, take at, uh, attention to, to these kind of projects. So opportunities, which are the opportunities? Um, one opportunity that we have is that all the companies that, I, that are big in Mexico, uh, we are all together working in provide information to future agronomists. So we are um, sharing knowledge and also uh, sharing this passion. And we have noticed how uh, the students are uh, like very interested and they are applying the knowledge in, at least now in small companies like these ones, uh, these, these ones, uh, micro means companies. So the results are positive and are evident. And one big opportunity that we have, the biggest opportunity is the legalization of cannabis. Uh, we know that uh, investors are ready. So in this day, they, they do want to invest because because they know that this crop is more profitable. So uh, the growers are getting prepared, investors are getting ready. We know that because they reach us uh, with, with questions uh, in the uh, indoor short course that we have. We also teach about, about cannabis. So we are getting an idea of the people that is interested in this area. And we know that there is a lot of potential of inversion in here. And we also now know that the government will be, uh, will be happy happy to also be part of this project. So uh, the, all, all the funding that we want uh, for, for indoor production, I think will be, uh, they will speed up the process when uh, cannabis uh, get uh, legalized. We're hoping to uh, this get done in one or two years, the legalization of cannabis. Another opportunity that we have is that uh, companies um, private companies, they are supporting projects in indoor farming. So right now the government is not, is not helping a lot, 
but uh, we have private private companies that have uh, funded uh, different uh, projects. For example, Verde Compacto, uh, it was uh, it, it, it is a company that was funded by by private private companies. So now the government is paying attention to these technologies, and uh, we also know that university programs are on the revision. Some of them, at least, uh, to include this kind of information. So as you can notice, uh, there is no comparison, as I mentioned, uh, between uh, United States or other countries with uh, Latin America projects. But uh, we, I think we, we know where are the, the issues right now and which are the areas where we need to work in order to push indoor farming. So we hope to have uh, new generations of people prepared uh, for working in indoor farming. So the new generation will be the fuel to expand indoor farming in Mexico. And this is all I got. <laughs> this is all I got from, from uh, the status of indoor farming in Mexico. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, I'm ready.